and the glory. Come on, let's thank God for all our first time visitors here today. Come on, if you're a first time visitor, let me see your hand. Come on, don't be shy. I won't call you out. All right, all right. Thank God. Come on, y'all. Another hand clap for our first time visitor. And also our first time guests also that are online. Give my hand clap for our online church today. Amen. We thank God for all of our online uh, members here today, our online guests. We thank God for you that you are tuning in. Amen. And for those who are here and got up out of bed and showed up this morning. Hallelujah. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Amen. We are, we are just excited about the Lord today because he rose. He is risen from the dead. Amen. And we serve a true and living Savior today. Amen. My heart is full. I'm, 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 this has been a weekend long celebration, really all week long. You know, I've been basking in the presence of God. But I tell you, y'all, if y'all didn't come out on Friday night, y'all missed something wonderful. I mean, it was just awesome. Amen. We did the seven sayings of Christ. Amen, which we do every year, but boy, I'm telling you, it was something about this year. Amen, but you know what? Y'all can go on citadelofhopemission.org. Go on the website or go to our YouTube channel, Citadel Mission. Amen, and if you are a member here and you have not subscribed, I'm mad at you. Amen, go on that YouTube channel and subscribe. All you got to do is hit that little button. Y'all subscribe to everything else. Come on, y'all follow so many people on Twitter. Y'all don't know whether y'all Twittering or is it, do y'all use Twitter anymore? No, they doing TikTok now. Can you follow people on TikTok? Yeah, see, yeah, you are. Big, big mouth, big, big mouth. Yeah, amen. Y'all better follow the word of God. That was, that's what's going to get you through. Amen. But I'm glad to see your faces today. We're coming from Matthew, the 28th chapter. Matthew 28, beginning at the 28th verse. As we pray, Father God, we thank you today for this wonderful day. This day that the sun is shining so bright. We thank you, O oh God, because not only is this sun shining bright, but the sun of the living God is shining bright in us today because we are letting our light so shine before men that they might see our good works and then glorify the Father which is in heaven. Father God, we come to you today over this portion of our service, this portion of giving the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, you know what we need, not just what we want, but you know what we need. So I'm asking you right now, God, to prepare the ground of our heart Prepare the ground of our heart. Soften our hearts, oh God, where there are stony places that want to reject your word. God, we ask you right now to prepare us so that we can receive all that you have for us today. Help us to not be resistant to what you are trying to say. Save somebody, heal somebody, set somebody free. Change our minds today so that we can then walk up right before you and have a true reason to celebrate. I said, we all want a true reason to celebrate. And that celebration is salvation and salvation alone. So we thank you right now for this word. In Jesus' name we pray that all God's people say amen, amen. and amen. Amen. I, I know I sound pooped today. Amen. On Friday night, they had me screaming. I got no voice. Oh, I had to tell these guys over here to stop playing. And they just, they was terrible. Amen. So I, I, I don't have any voice. I don't have no voice left today. Amen. But the Holy Ghost is in charge, right? All right. Coming from Matthew 28, verse 1. Reading about Jesus here. And it says here, Y'all told me I had two pair of glasses. I, I, I put out an APB on my glasses today. 
Amen. I had to go get an extra pair that I forgot I had. Amen. But we thank God because these are more recent and I can see just a little bit better. Amen. The Bible says here, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, uh, 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 came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake and the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, you know, some years ago, I, I, I bought a message from this, from this chapter and we were stuck on that the angel of the Lord sat. Y'all remember that? Yes. He sat on that stone. Yes, what the Lord had given me was that that stone represented, amen, that blockage of your way out. A lot of us are still in that tomb right now. That tomb represents death. That tomb represents what needs to be in the past. Amen. That tomb sometimes represents what we need to leave behind. All of our ideas, all of our things, all the things that we go through, the things that we hold in our heart. Tell somebody it's time to arise. Let's say that again. It's time to arise. That's my subject today. It's time to arise. Amen. Many times in the word of God, we will see that Jesus would go and pray for people and he would tell them arise. Amen. We, we, we saw it when uh, 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 when the men bought uh, the, the, uh, the paralyzed man and he let him down in through the roof. Y'all remember that story? He let him down through the roof and, and, and in that uh, 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 um, Jesus saw the faith of his friends and Jesus said your, your, your sins be forgiven yes. amen and then they, they you know the people that were around they thought that that was so blasphemous because they was asking Jesus well who do you think you are yes. Jesus knew who he was oh, yes. amen he was God come on Emmanuel God with us Amen. And through that experience, Jesus told, he said, arise. And today I believe that God is telling us to arise. You know, every time God told somebody to arise, he gave them instruction right after he said arise. He gave them instructions right after he said arise because arise is an action word. Many times as he told them to arise, he would say go. And do or take up your bed arise take up your bed and walk okay that was the man who was laying out there and paralyzed also so we see Jesus do anything while he was uh, 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 ministering you know he would tell them to arise and go do something and many of us amen I believe today amen some of us are still stuck in those tombs and we have to use the example of Jesus Christ today because I believe that God has sent you some help today. I believe that he has sent you some word today to give you the strength to quicken you. Those things that are holding you down. Those things that are those grave clothes as we talk about. How many remember the story of Lazarus? Lazarus was held by those grave clothes. The Bible says that he couldn't, even though Jesus called his name, he couldn't come out because he was stuck with those things that bound him up. I want to ask you today, what's holding you in your tomb? What's holding you in your tomb? God has already called your name. You know that you're better than what you've been in. You know that God has called you. You know that God has had his hand on you. Otherwise, you'd be dead. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say, thank God for grace. Because it's grace that, keep, that keeps us alive. Especially when we're outside of the will of God. His grace. Somebody prayed for you. 
Come on, let me say that again, because we take that for granted. You know, we think that's just a, a good old foot tapping song. Somebody pray for me. Have me on. It's more than a song, baby. Somebody pray for you. If it were not for prayer, where would you be? See, some of y'all here because you think you got invited. Tell somebody, this is a divine appointment today. Ah, you had an appointment that you were not even aware of last week. But God knew that you would be here today. I'm talking to you in the back. Yeah, I know y'all wanted to sit back there. Hallelujah. Maybe you got here late. I don't know. But you had a divine appointment today. And God is asking you today, what's holding you back? You know what you're supposed to be doing. You know that you have been called. You know that you are a child of God. And if you don't know it, I'm telling you today. I'm making you aware of God's plan for your life. Ah, I just heard somebody say, I don't know if he's talking about me. That's exactly who I'm talking to. I don't care about your background. I don't care where you come from. God is able to deliver. Come on, because if he saved me, he can save you. Ah, anybody got that testimony? Tell him I was messed up. I was messed up. I was messed up. Boy, I was messed up. But God. See, you got to understand I had a but God moment. That delivered me from all of my sins. Not only did it deliver me from my sin, but it delivered me from the shame of telling my sin. Because I'm no longer in that state. I left it in the tomb. Hallelujah. The devil didn't want to let me out. Come on, anybody got that testimony? Oh man, so resistant, so resistant, so resistant. Amen, that my flesh was resistant. See, I, see, I say the devil, but it was really me. I didn't want to let me out. Come on, let's tell the truth. And what they say? Shame the devil. It was me. Because I thought I was enjoying the things that I did. Come on, y'all. Y'all probably ain't never heard nothing like this, but we true in this church. Because the truth will make you free. Hello, somebody. I'm not here to sugarcoat anything. It's a struggle to come out of what you're in. It's not easy separating yourself from sin. Matter of fact, it's impossible to separate yourself from sin. You need a but God moment. I'm going through all of this but God who is rich in mercy. Come on, somebody. But God who is able to deliver me from all of my trouble. But God who is able to save me in spite of myself. But God the one who died for me. That while the Bible says that while I was yet a sinner. Right now I can claim that he died for me. Hallelujah. We're talking about it's time to arise. Arise and come out. The Bible says, amen. It says that we're supposed to be separated from the world. We can't do those things that we used to do. See, I, I know, I know we, we try to be so inviting and we say, oh, come as you are. And we want you to come as you are. But you can't stay like that. When God saves you, there's a change. And I'm not telling you something that, you know, I'm telling you something that I personally had to go through. Hallelujah. Because I ain't have no devil and an angel. I had a devil and a devil. 
come on, any, uh, don't raise your hand. Ah. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, go ahead, raise your hand and shame them. Come on. I had a devil and a devil, y'all. Holly, and the thing is that I was brought up in church. Hallelujah. It's so, it's so crazy how our flesh is so resistant to come out of that grave place. Hallelujah. That place that is so dark, yet not happy. You can't find joy. You come in here and you look at us. What are these fools jumping around like that for? They say the same thing for 10 minutes. They've been singing that same song for like 10 minutes. They just repeat themselves over. I heard you today. How long they gonna sing that song? But that's what happens when God gets on the inside of you. You, 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 you can't tell him enough how much I love you. The Bible says if I had 10,000 tongues, I still could not praise him enough. And, and, and sometimes, y'all, what, what looks so foolish is so, so good. People look at you, why are they jumping around like that? Look like he's getting electrocuted. But when God quickens you, you can't help it. See, it's nothing wrong with being addicted, but you got to be addicted to the right thing. You know, I, I was careful when I came up not to get hooked on certain things because I looked at the background of my family. A family I come from, not my mother and father per se, but through our family. Some of y'all in here. Come from a line of alcoholics. Oh, shut up, family. Don't let them know who you are. Stop acting like that. So I had to be careful because I, 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 I thought I came from a line of addictive personalities. Now, I ain't going to say I was 100% successful from staying from all that stuff. Amen. But I had a conscience not, you know, it was the Holy Ghost that would just allow me to go but so far. Ah, thank God for prayer. It's not because I made those decisions. It was because of prayer. Amen. My grandmother, my father, my mother, they prayed for me. Some of the saints right in here that I'm pastoring over today prayed for me because they knew how I was. That's why it took them 10 years to accept me as a pastor. Oh, thank you, Lord God. They said, no, not Wade. The boy I knew. That's what Jesus does. He saves the worst of us. I wasn't that bad, but he, stop it, stop it, stop it. See, it's, it's hard serving the Lord with your family because your family know you. They know what you used to do. And it takes a God moment to reveal. Come on. Even Jesus said that he was not appreciated in his own town. But saints of God, I'm, I'm coming to you today, amen, saying again that it is time for us to arise and come out of that tomb. I believe that God has sent us help. He has rolled back the stone. He has sent angels to sit on that stone so that you can have a way out of your distress. But the thing is, is that the Bible says that we have to be persuaded that the way of God is better than the way that you're working in. And that's why it's up to the people of God to live the life that God has called us to live. Come on, those that are saved, come on, those that are in Christ Jesus, does anybody want what you got? Come on, when they look at your life, does anybody want what you got? Are you frowning just as much as they are? 
Are you complaining just as much as they are when you go to work, girl? They're like, but I, 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 thought, I thought the Lord supplied all your needs. I, I, I thought that you had the joy, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Those of us that are in Christ Jesus, you can complain, but you got to complain to the right person. I'm just setting for I'm just setting y'all folk up for the ones who are gonna go and accept Jesus Christ today, because you can't go back to work tomorrow complaining, because God is going to make a transition in your life today. Come on, that's what I believe today. So I'm gonna give you both sides of it today. But God has created a way for you to come out. Of whatever you're in even though it seems very difficult yes, yes. very difficult how many found it difficult to come out of what you were in see everybody think that no nah, not me everybody thinks that yes. no this ain't for me that's exactly who God is talking to yes, that's right. Amen. when we say I ain't ready for all that yet Y'all super spiritual. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. I'm spiritual, but I know how to have fun. Amen. I enjoy salvation. I enjoy Jesus Christ. I enjoy having a good time. Come on, y'all. If that is your example, you at the wrong place. Because we love to enjoy Jesus. The first thing you're going to feel when you come in this house is love. First thing, when you come through the door, we got people strategically placed. I don't put no frowners at the door. Uh-uh, we can't do that because that'll turn you away. When you come, you're like, oh, what's wrong? These people are so full of love because that's Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus is love, right? Jesus is love so we have to understand amen that when this stone is rolled away when you come out of that thing the Bible tells us that when they went to look into the tomb all they saw was grave clothes they saw the napkin there folded he left evidence that I was here come on y'all anybody got evidence that you used to be there I got evidence, but I ain't dead no more. Come on, thank God for Jesus. So what am I saying? Once you accept the Lord today, don't let nobody make you shame of what you left in that tomb. Don't let nobody make you shame of what you come out of. That's your evidence. That wave was there. Come on, come on, you can call your own name. I'm calling my name. I don't want y'all to think I'm talking about you. But I am. One of my favorite movies is Charles Shank Redemption. Every time it come on, I watch it. Amen. And when that guy get out of jail, he goes there and he carved his name because he couldn't take being out of prison. He couldn't take being out of that place of bondage. He desired to go back. Yes. Yes. So he committed suicide because he couldn't take freedom. Come on, That's right. mm, sounds like a lot of us. Amen. Sounds like the Israelites when they were back in Egypt. Jesus delivered them. God delivered them. They said, man, you brought us out here to die. I want to go back. At least I got a meal and some water. You can't even give us nothing to drink. So the Bible says Moses got mad and struck the rock. He said, y'all stupid. I ain't going to say what he called him. You can use your imagination, but keep it clean. You in church. It caused him to strike the rock. And he found himself disobedient to what the Lord said. The Lord told him to speak to the rock. But this man on Shawshank Redemption, why am I going to this movie? I don't know. 
But this man, he could not take freedom. And I'm telling you that the enemy, even when you come out of where you are, he's going to make your freedom seem scary. He's going to make your freedom seem like it's unattainable. Anybody ever been there? Oh, come on, y'all. Come on, let's tell the truth today. Let's not act like you got it all right on the first time around. Hello, somebody. That's why I laugh at people. God is a God of a second chance. That's a lie. Because if he was just a God of a second chance, I'd be dead. God is the God of another chance. I said God is a God of another chance. But I don't want to give you the excuse. Oh, I'm taking your excuses away today. I don't want to give you the excuse that I, I can't do this today. The Bible says the day when you hear my voice, harden not your heart. You better accept this thing for what it is. This is liberty. This is freedom. And God will give you, come on, the strength to deal with freedom. Do you understand freedom is something we have to deal with? Do you know how long it took our people, I'm talking about black people, and I know we have other races in here. It took black people years to get used to freedom. They didn't know what to do with it. Some of us, it's the same thing spiritually. We don't know what to do with freedom. We don't know what it is to be free in God. Before when we come free, we go to look to bind ourselves back up with rules and regulations that man made up. Right. Hallelujah. You got to get into this word and follow it for yourself. The Bible says that we are to search the scriptures to make sure that it is so. Hallelujah. And that's why we need Sunday school. That's why we need Bible class. It ain't just coming to church on Sunday that's going to get you through. It's taking time with God. It says to study to show yourself approved unto God. Workmen not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The Bible says that in Galatians 20 and, tw I'm sorry, Galatians 2 and 20, it says here, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. It, the word may seem like I'm giving you a lot of responsibility. Like salvation is a big responsibility. But all I'm asking you to do is try Jesus. And that responsibility is then transferred over to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will help you to get to wherever you need. He will change your mind. He will change how you think. He'll change how you walk and how you talk. And there is nothing too difficult for God to bring you through. Do I have a witness today? Come on, really. Seriously. Do I have a witness today? See, people think that some sins are greater than others. But the Bible says sin is sin. And there is no sin that is too hard for God to bring you through. There is no mind that is so confused that God can't straighten you out. Somebody needs to hear that. Because you ain't that bad. Let me say that again. You ain't that bad. I know I'm using Ebonics, so y'all got to excuse me. You're not that bad to where God can't use you. And there's something in you right now today, even in the midst of your sin, that God wants to use. He needs your bad attitude. He needs your motor mouth. 
But what he going to do is he going to use it for his glory. So y'all think when you get saved, you become all soft, punkish. Oh, I can't say that. Acting like a Christian punk. Today, all we heard today, I think about three or four of them this morning saying, y'all, y'all don't know when I was in the world, I had an attitude. I cuss anybody out. I cut you. <laughs> Hallelujah. God wants to use that. Just like he used Paul. Come on somebody. Who was a murderer. He was, oh man, he was zealous about what he did. But God wanted to take that man and use him for his glory. So stop thinking you that bad that God can't use you. You are exactly somebody say, I'm exactly who God wants to use. Somebody give him a praise today. I'm crucified with Christ. My old man has passed away. Old things are passed away and behold, all things become new. So I need you to judge yourself according to the way God is judging you right now. Does your life line up with the word of God? That's it. Some are saying, well, I don't really know the word of God. So how can I know whether my life lines up or not? Keep coming. Keep coming. We have the truth for you. Truth sometimes hurts, <laughs> but it's beneficial. Hallelujah. When you do surgery, there is no surgery that you can go through that you ain't going to hurt. Sometimes they'll give you morphine and they'll give you uh, whatever stuff they give you. Anesthesia to knock you out while they're doing surgery on you. But at some point, you're going to feel some pain. And I'm here to tell you, God is good. But through this process, as we heard on Friday night, God will save you, but there's going to be a cleaning process. There's going to be a cleaning process, and sometimes it will hurt. And we're not doing this to hurt your feelings. As I told many of you when you first came to Christ, my first obligation is not your feelings. As a pastor, my first obligation is your soul. So I'm going to tell you what's good for you. Matter of fact, I ain't going to tell you nothing. The Holy Ghost is going to tell you what's good for you. I'm only a willing vessel because believe me, I'm on this train too. I'm trying to work out my own soul salvation. Some of that stuff want to follow me out my tomb sometime. And I got to tell it to get back. Sometimes the people in front of you make you want to go back in there and get something. Tell them, watch out there now. Sometimes people will make you want to go back and get something, but that's a place of danger. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And you're worth it. Somebody say, I'm worth it. You thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life You thought I was worth keeping So you cleaned me up inside You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be whole so I could tell, come on, stand to your feet with me. You thought I was my saving. Come on, praise and worship. So you came, changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for.
Say, I'm free today. Come on, say, I'm coming out of this thing. Come on, I'm coming out of this tomb. I'm coming out of this dark place. Come on, say, I'm getting out. I'm getting out. Come on, I'm saying this so you can make up your mind. Come on, make up your mind. Come on, make up your mind. Hallelujah. Come on, I'm, I'm getting out of this thing. Come on, I'm tired of being here. I'm tired of this struggle. I'm tired of this fighting. Hallelujah. God, I need something to change in my life. Yes. It's got to be better than this. Yes. It's got to be better than this. Come on. Yes. yes. Thank you, Jesus. God wants to do it for you today. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But you got to have a made up mind. Yes. And let God do the work. Amen. That's I'm right. going to say that again. Let God do the work. But you got to make yourself available. Yes. So you're saying, Pastor, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Okay, I, after I say this prayer, what am I supposed to do? Make yourself available to the move of God. Yeah. Come on now. Hallelujah. What does that mean? I want you to pay attention because I believe that God's going to speak to your heart. Yes. You're going to have a feeling on the inside. You're going to say, man, this is different. Yes, it is. I don't want to argue with these folk yes. no more. Mm -hmm. Come on. I, I, I'm casting the cuss words out your mouth right Ooh, now. Jesus. Oh, yeah. oh, yes, Lord. Come on, we 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 breaking every chain. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes. Somebody shout, break every chain. Break every chain. Yes. Ah, I felt something there. Say it again. Break every chain. Break every chain. If you don't know the Lord, if you don't know the Lord today, I'm going to ask you right now to say it with me. Lord, break every chain. Lord, break every chain. Hallelujah. Ah. Break it. I can see it in my mind. Somebody is caught by their foot right now. Hallelujah. You got one foot out and he's trying to drag you back in. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Ah, break every chain. Oh, I feel like somebody needs to walk this thing. Yes, yes, yes. I usually don't do this on Resurrection Sunday morning, but come on, if you don't know the Lord, I just need you to walk. Whoa. Come on, if you don't know him, don't be afraid. Don't come be afraid. On. Just come walk on. this thing out. Thank you, Jesus. I, I need you to do this in the spirit. Yes. That I, I'm coming out of this thing. Yes. yes. Come on, just, just get in the aisle. Just, just get in the aisle. Anybody, I, I don't care. Just get out, just walk, just walk, come on. Just walk around, just, just walk around, just walk around. Come on. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you something else. I'm going to tell you something else. The Lord is saying now, now he's speaking to you, to you saved folk. Hallelujah. To y'all that even know the Lord. Some of you are dealing with some afflictions that have you in that place. Come on now. And the Lord is the, the Lord is saying, I'm gonna deliver you out of this thing. Yes. Yes. I'm gonna break yes. that chain of affliction. Hallelujah. But I need you to walk it out. Walk it out. Come on, if you're going through something right now, yes. come on, if there's a sickness in your body, yes. come on, and that thing seems to have a hold of you, I need you to walk out of that place right now in Jesus' name. Come on, don't be afraid. Come on, walk it out. 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 Walk it out in Jesus' name. Come on, as you walk 
say in the name of Jesus. Come on, I've got the victory. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Come on, say it with me. In the name of Jesus. I've got the victory. I'm no longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. Before we do that, I'm going to pray real quick. Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, you see these who are walking right now. God, you see these who are in need of a blessing. God, you see these who are in need of a miracle. Father, I'm asking you right now to come into their life. Make their life your abiding place in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask you right now, oh God, that you speak to their hearts. Speak to their minds. Let them know that you are there and that you love them. Oh, what a love Jesus has for me. He died on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. Father, I speak clear vision. I speak clear vision. Help us to see ourselves and where we are. Help us to see our truth. Help us to see our truth. Help us to see our truth. So that we can do what needs to be done. To be close to you. If you don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sins. I'm going to ask you to repeat this prayer with me. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry. When you say this prayer. We're going to ask the Holy Ghost to take care of the rest. But the Bible tells us that we have to first confess with our mouth. And believe in our heart. That Jesus is who he says he is. Hallelujah. And who he is, is our savior. He's our way of escape. He's our way out of our mess. He's our redeemer. He's the one that loves you more than you can ever imagine. That's why he's giving you chance after chance after chance. But you're going to take advantage of this chance today. Come on, are you ready today? Come on, repeat this prayer with me. Lord God, I come to you in Jesus' name asking you to forgive me of all of my sins and all of my shortcomings. Today, I'm depending on you for my full deliverance. Today, I'm depending on you for my full healing in the name of Jesus. I am brand new. Come on. I am brand new. All things are passed away. And today, I have a made up mind to live for Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give him a praise right now. Do you believe that? This song says I've got the victory. You got to believe it though. It's more, somebody say this is more than a song. Come on, are you ready? Are you ready? Come on, put your hands together. Come on. Are you ready? Come on. Hallelujah. I've got 
Yeah.